uh, my classroom, I read the kids the, the first book, The Little House in the Big Woods, you know, that Laura Ingalls. And basically throughout the whole book, they were getting ready for winter. And I told the kids, you know, I said back then, you know, you had to be ready for winter or you starved. There wasn't a Triggs or a grocery store to go to. Winter. would be, uh, you know, for a small acreage, I've got four and a half acres here, and um, obviously a, a, a cow requires a little bit more, so the goats are small, easy to handle and manage, and, and um, they're Nubian Alpine crosses, the, the half Nubian, half Alpine, and, and uh, it's just something I, I've always, I've worked on many dairy farms, and I've always kind of had an interest in it, and I just thought, you know, this would be a good, uh, for, for the size of the place that I have, a good, uh, thing for me to do. Um, the milk is, is, I mean, some people really like the goat's milk. It's naturally homogenized, which is easier to digest. The fat globules are a lot smaller, and that's why people, you know, some people can only drink goat's milk, those who have lactose problems. You know. I used to raise sheep, and, and uh, you know, they're fairly similar. Goats and sheep have a lot of similar qualities as far as hoof trimming and stuff like that. So. The two bigger females are bred, so in March I could have four more because they had their first kids last year and they were both singles. Uh, I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. It's um, on the western side of Illinois where the Mississippi and the Rock River meet. Um, Rock Island, I think the population is around 40,000, but the whole metro, there's a couple other towns close by, about 200,000, so. Grew up in, in a typical neighborhood, you know. Um, I was, I graduated from Point and got a job at a, at a, at a as a, um, well I graduated in biology and natural science and got a job at the, in the paper mill in Rhineland, in the research lab working there. and. Um, Got married shortly, oh, a couple of years after that I got married and uh, and then lived in a little town called Bancroft, Wisconsin. I'd always had an interest in the outdoors and agriculture and, and, and started working for um, uh, the girl I married, her uncle had a dairy farm. So I started working on his farm for him on weekends when I could and, and uh, really enjoyed that. Um, and knew that was something I really wanted to kind of get into. So the place I bought in Bancroft had acreage, so I put up some fence and I bought some sheep, uh, which I didn't know anything about, but i never forget when I, um, you know, every year you should shear your sheep, and I, and I uh, didn't, you know, I found a name in a phone book uh, of a guy and called him, and he never called me back. In the meantime, I'm sitting here thinking, well, what am I gonna do with these sheep? I couldn't get a hold of the guy, so I went out and bought a sheep shearing machine and just learned how to do that, but we, you know, that was something I really liked. And then and then we moved down to a small town in Illinois after, shortly after that. I had three kids at the time, um, small town in Illinois. Um, and I had, there's where I really kind of did quite a bit of my farming. I raised sheep, goats, cows, I had a horse, uh, chickens, rabbits, did the whole kind of thing and sold it, sold a lot of that stuff organically. Of course, I cut my own, all my own firewood, and that's that's a job I feel like I'm never done. That doesn't have a season. When I have spare time, I cut wood because we burn. I mean, that's our my sole source of heat. I, I can't come in and turn on the thermostat. That's that's not you know that, an option I have. I try and have three years worth of wood because looking, you know, so down the road, I'm thinking, what if I were to throw my back out or get hurt and, and I'm laid up for a year? I'm, I still want to make sure that I have that firewood for that, for that. So, you know, um, so 
between the garden and 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 the, and the and the livestock I have here, plus hunting. I mean, we hunt deer and and uh, fishing, uh, ice fishing mostly. Um, try to produce as much of my food as I can. And then uh, the garden. There wasn't a garden here when I came, and, and none of, none of the trees or anything. So I've got a little grapevine here. I've got blackberries and then uh, I got about 15 20 blueberry bushes um, what else do I have strawberries in the garden potatoes tomatoes beets green beans squash uh, and then uh, of course there's apple tree there I've got some honey crisp and some uh, Jonah Mac it's called apples um, you know, I've, I've only been here a couple years, so they haven't started producing yet. But that's my kids when I get apple trees or whatever. They're like, when are we going to get apples? I say, yeah, about three years, and they don't like that too much. They want them right away, you know. But Obviously, I can't make sugar or some of those other things that you need. But basic necessities, milk, eggs. You know, I bake bread. I bake pies. I mean, I'm, 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 I can cook too, you know. I mean, if you got all this stuff and you don't know what to do with it, it, it doesn't do you much good, so... Teaching was always something that was in the back of my mind, and I thought now's the time for me to go back and, and you know, pursue this uh, uh, profession. So I went back to school and, and then got my teaching license and, and uh, started as an aide in the school, and, and now I'm teaching first grade. I lived in a lot of places, done a lot of different jobs, but I really like, I really like teaching. You know, sometimes I'll bring up something that I did on the weekend and some of the teachers are like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know, you know, I, I don't really talk about it a whole lot. So, so not to say that I'm, my privacy is, is, is everything, but I just kind of keep my life here a little different. I mean, most of them kind of know that I have some of the animals and stuff like that. But, um, and really I think, uh, you know, where we live up here is, um, is so rural and, and people are kind of used to my lifestyle. That, that it's not um, that big of a, of a surprise to them. Um, you know, when you've got a job that you love going to every day, you know, you're, you're doing pretty good, and this is the job for me, so. I guess I've always uh, kind of been somebody who, uh, and my kids will give me a hard time about this too, is I don't like to ask for help. Unless I really, I'm really, you know, really desperate. But I, I just have this independent um, nature to me. And, um, and I just think, you know, I think when I had kids, one of the things that, um, after my first child was born and, and, and the three that came after him is, I feel a certain sense of responsibility. I mean, an overwhelming sense of responsibility to take care of them. And, and I don't wanna be reliant on anybody else for my basic needs. Now, I used to love the duck hunt, but I could never fix them so that I liked eating them, so I quit duck hunting because I, you know, sh killing for fun is, I don't know, maybe some people do it, but I, I, I definitely try to utilize every part of the deer. You know, we, I haven't bought hamburger in years. We, we eat venison. That's what we eat up here. And, and um, you know, I mean, it's, some people say it's an acquired taste, but really my kids have been eating it forever and they know, you know, um, that's what they, that's what we do. But um, yeah, I, I, you know, we are ethical hunters. We try to be as much as possible. You know, I mean, um, my kids, you know, I, I started this with my son, Jake, when he got a deer after he shot the deer, you know, he said a little prayer over it, thanking God for, you know, giving us meat for, for, for the year. And um, 
know, it's, it's, that's kind of important to me that the kids acquire a respect for nature and, and, the, and the things that are out there and the gifts that, that are, uh, you know, part of that. So, you know, we'll, we'll make hamburger and steaks and I, and I am still dabbling in my sausage making skills. I'm German, so you think it'd be instinctive, but it's not. And uh, <laughs> um, what else? I can a lot of it. Just can uh, with the pressure cooker. We can the venison, and, and uh, you know it's. And as far as the hides go, I just kind of started doing it, making just little throwing over chairs and stuff like that. The thing I'd like to try trying to do is make buckskin out of it. That's where you take the the, the hair off, and then. And then uh, you can it's just basically leather and then making whatever out of it. I just kind of started doing this because I had 10 extra minutes in a day and I definitely wanted to fill it up doing something. <laughs> Never want to have a minute where you're sitting down not doing anything. So. Uh, a friend of mine once said to me, he goes, Boy, you're getting the most out of that four acres that you can, aren't you? Just any any opportunity that I have to use what I have around me, I try to take advantage of.